as we bring you coverage of our first private astronaut commercial space flight, Galactic 2. I'm Sarisha Banla. I run research operations and government affairs here at Virgin Galactic, and I had the privilege of becoming astronaut 004 on our Unity 22 test flight. We're coming to you live from our home at Spaceport America, set in the beautiful state of New Mexico here in the U.S. Uh, earlier this morning observed a perfect takeoff from our runway here at Spaceport America with Eve, the mothership, piloted by astronauts Nicola Pacelli and Mike Masucci. Mothership Eve it has uh, completed the climb to launch altitude, which for today's flight is 44 and a half thousand feet. But in addition to that launch altitude, there's also a designated launch point within the airspace. Everything is looking fantastic. As I said, we're already at altitude. We're at 46,000 feet right now. And just a beautiful view you get from up there. I imagine our crew are taking it in and they're preparing themselves as we get closer and closer to that big... John is joined by Keisha Shahoff and Anastasia Myers, a Cari Caribbean mother-daughter duo who won their seats in a draw that raised funds for nonprofit Space for Humanity. These three remarkable individuals show that the barriers that once existed to becoming an astronaut are being broken down. When I was two years old, just looking up in the skies, I was like, how can I get there? Being in the Caribbean, I didn't see how that was possible. So slowly I started letting that go. But the universe was really calling me. I want to be an astrobiologist, and that seemed like it was impossible. But ideas are very powerful. I was in the Olympic Games in 1972. I've always enjoyed being an adventurer. I was flying with my daughter, and there was an ad that popped up. Would you like to become an astronaut? Would you like to go to space? And I said, yes. John is one of the most incredible people I've ever met. The fact that he's been following this company for 18 years, just for this moment, I think that's very special. For some reason, I seem to attract myself to these experiences. But when I got diagnosed with Parkinson's, I thought, well, that's it. They're not going to accept me. The fact that I am now going to space with Parkinson's is completely magical. Now, going to our pilots who are going to be taking our dynamic crew to space, I want to introduce our commander of Unity, astronaut CJ Sturkow, a retired Marine test pilot and former NASA astronaut. Sturkow is a veteran of four space shuttle missions and three Virgin Galactic Unity missions. He's the first person to launch the space from three different states. Piloting Unity today is Kelly Latimer, who has logged more than 6,700 hours in her 32-year flying career. Kelly also operates as our Senior Director of Flight Test. This will be Kelly's first space flight, and she'll become one of only a handful of women to pilot a commercial spacecraft. And joining the crew in the cabin is my fellow Unity 22 crewmate, Beth Moses. Beth is our chief astronaut instructor overseeing all the training and preparation of the Galactic 2 crew. Beth is flying with the crew to continue to evaluate the spaceflight experience for our future astronauts. All right, so we're about a minute 10 away from release at this point, one minute. Five. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Ignition, good control. There's Mach 1. The pilots have started trimming for that turn towards space. Trim is now set. There is max Q. That's the point of maximum pressure exerted on the vehicle by the atmosphere. Those on board are experiencing about three Gs right now and traveling over a thousand miles an hour. That's incredible. I can imagine they're having quite a great time. We're at Mach 2. We're in the vertical headed towards space. This is the part where they're seeing Earth move away and seeing space come into view and seeing that they're going to space and just, it is an incredible feeling. The so we've got about Mach 2.8, Mach 3 approximately, and rocket motor cutoff. Amazing, the crowds here are just <laughs> absolutely going wild. I can't imagine what's happening in Antigua with them cheering them on. 
That's Incredible. Awesome. Go Keisha, go <laughs> Anna, go John. So everybody on board has been cleared to unstrap and enjoy that zero G experience. The pilots have unlocked the feather. That's the preparation so that they can raise the feather here momentarily. They're engaging the RCS as well. The feather is now starting to move on its way up. Everyone's up out of their seats. Just oh, it's incredible. They're the all, I know, they're, it's, it's amazing. They're all going to the window and taking in this just absolutely incredible view of Earth, the planet where all of their experiences are held. Everything they've ever known is That's wonderful. down below. The feather is all the way up. We have a predicted apogee of about 289,000 feet. That is amazing. Our crew looks like they're having an absolutely incredible time and they are officially astronauts. Welcome to space. Woo. Congratulations <laughs> to John, to Keisha, to Anna on becoming astronauts today. And a special congratulations to our Unity pilot, Kelly, for her first space flight. And welcome back to space, CJ and Beth. And the vehicle is oriented in that, that backflip or that upside down maneuver from our perspective. Uh, and you can see them just enjoying that view of the earth below. Oh, they, man, it's just incredible. I, I can see that they just can't take their eyes away. And it's, you know, it's hard for us to describe. We can obviously see they're having just an incredible time in space taking in the views, but it's an experience. It's the silence. It's the views. It's yes. seeing our brilliant planet against the matte black of space. I can't imagine. And even on re-entry, the, the amount of Gs that you feel, but um, mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's designed that anyone can do it, as we've and seen today. And the views are going to be amazing on the way down, too. We're now, we just passed subsonic. Amazing. And the crowds, again, are just cheering on our entire crew. They're going to be able to see the vehicle um, as it comes down to land and our crew here are also uh, going to be um, just, again, they're going to be able to see Spaceport America. They're going to be able to see their, you know, see, just see that their family and their friends are yes. there cheering them on as they come back and return to Spaceport America. So we've passed below 60,000 feet. Uh, once we get to about 53 to 55,000 feet, we'll command the feather down. That'll um, result in the nose of the spaceship dropping. And then once the feather is down and locked, it, which it's now moving, the crew will pull back on the stick and make a gentle return to uh, level flight. I remember during the re-entry, I just could not, again, I just could not stop looking <laughs> out the window. The, the landscape of New Mexico is just very indicative of this planet. It's beautiful and it's that, um, it's really just amplifies going to space, looking down on just the beautiful planet you've just left. And the feather is now down and locked. So the pilots are starting that uh, gentle pull back to straight and level flight. It's spaceship is now a glider. So it's all about balancing that potential and kinetic energy. If they want to go faster, they push the nose uh, down. And if they want to go slower, they pull back and bring the nose up. It's absolutely incredible. G2 is a flight for the history books. The crew on board are on the leading edge of broadening space access and are taking the first steps in hopes that others may find it easier to follow their lead. Final right now, and that's a, uh, a left turn so that uh, CJ, the pilot, the commander in the ship has a view of the runway. The landing gear is now down and locked. And we're about eight, uh, 7,500 feet. Amazing. Again, I've said this before many times, but the crew have this incredible view, not only of the New Mexican landscape, but of our spaceport facility, which is this incredible facility where they spent the last few days bonding with their crew and training with their crew. So of course, yeah. holds a special part in their, in their hearts and they get to see that view on their way down. So we're 1,000 feet above the runway. The runway here is about 4,500 feet or 500 feet. Pre-flare, that's pulling the nose up and uh, taking advantage of the ground effect. It's extra lift you get when you're close to the ground. We've crossed the threshold. That's the beginning of the runway. Beautiful. And touch down of the main gear. Now CJ's gonna hold the nose gear up for a little bit that helps bleed off the uh, energy that the, the spaceship has uh, using the air drag associated with that. Now I started to lower the nose. Yeah. 
and the nose gear is now down. So at a designated airspeed, the pilots have the option to apply the brakes or not. They can let the, uh, let the vehicle uh, roll to a stop. We have plenty enough runway here. They are applying the brakes uh, today, so. Um, we have 12,000 feet of runway here 12, at Spaceport America. 12,000 feet of runway <laughs> and 200 feet wide, so plenty of room. <laughs> and full stop. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> What a beautiful landing. Congratulations to everyone on board. We saw beautiful flying from our EVE crew and brilliant work by our chase pilot, all of whom are still in the air right now. Thank you to everyone on the ground here at Spaceport America who made this day possible. Continue following us on social to hear more about our incredible astronauts and see more from this incredible flight. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for joining us.